So talk about talk about your recruiting process a little bit. Um, you know, what schools were kind of, you know, first to come about and then, you know, what ended up, you know, why did you end up choosing Syracuse? Well, it's funny because I remember I got my first letter. I think my first letter was from like Stony Brook. And then after that, Stony Brook, okay. Every, yeah, yeah. Like it was like it was weird. I remember like it was like in a week span. I got one letter, then the week later, I had like a mailbox full of letters. And at first I was like, oh well, you know, this is okay. Well, you know, at first I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I just thought, okay, they like me, I guess, whatever the case may be. But I didn't put two and two together at first. But then I realized, you know, these colleges are are sending me letters every day because they want me to represent their school. They think that I could uh, do well academically there, but not all, but not all academically, but also athletically, I could be successful on the basketball court. For some reason, I knew this is what I wanted. I had a long talk with one of my favorite teachers, Miss Minnie. She just passed away, and one of the reasons why I went to Syracuse was because they had the best communication school in the country, and I wanted to learn how to speak. I wanted to learn how to have a conversation with people. And a lot of people think that I committed after they won a national championship. I, I, but actually I committed uh, that, I think, that winter of 2003. So right before they won the championship. No, I'm sorry. I, I committed my, my sophomore year in high school. So I had two years to just worry about basketball in school and passing my SATs, making sure that I get that taken care of. And then once I committed, I knew I knew that uh, I made the right decision, not just obviously Syracuse. They recruit guys like myself, long, athletic, that can run and jump and shoot. So I knew that I made the right decision. And once they won a national championship, I definitely knew I made the right decision because I knew that we were going to be on TV. <laughs> so who, who, rec who recruited you? Uh, Michael Hopkins. Michael, Michael Hopkins. Hopkins. Tell, tell me about that, man. Tell me about that uh, uh, recruiting process. You know, he was relentless. He, he, he was relentless in his recruiting process, you know, from the letters, from the calls, from, from, you know, coming down and watching me play, whether it was in high school or AAU, he was, he was relentless in his pursuit of, 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 of pursuing me to convince me to come to Syracuse. And I'll be honest with you, I fell in love with him, you know, like his, you know, his enthusiasm, his, his, uh, you know, he made me believe in him and what he was saying. And uh, I felt safe coming to Syracuse because I knew that I was going to not only be taken care of by him, but Coach B, Coach B. No doubt. So, so you get to Syracuse, uh, you know, your first two years, uh, you're probably not as playing as much as you want to, but then your, your junior and senior year, you just break out. You know what I mean? You break out, you have a great, a great junior year, and then uh, eventually your senior year, you win uh, Big East Player of the Year. So during those first two years, you know, you could have transferred, you could have quit and tried to go somewhere else. But what made you stay on track and be able to focus and lock in to where you could get past that adversity of not playing all the time, not getting that those minutes that you wanted, and then eventually, you know, seeing that hard work pay off, you know, the third and fourth year? What, what, what really helped you lock in or who really helped you lock in and stay on track? Well, I wanted to transfer, honestly. Uh, my sophomore year, I was like, ah, I don't know if this is the right thing for me. And I remember Coach Beheim coming up to me like, do you really want to transfer? Like, name name three guys that have been transferred here or transferred out of here that were successful on the basketball court. And I, and, and I went home, did my research. And I was like, really nobody really, <laughs> you know, <laughs> does well. And, and secondly, I just... You know, I didn't want to quit, you know, I, you know, and I didn't want to give up and I didn't want the easy way out. It's easy to quit and say, oh, I'm not getting my way and oh, I'm not getting the time or whatever the case may be. So instead of instead of pointing the finger, I pointed the thumb and I started to ask myself questions like, what can I do better 
to get time on the court? What what do I have to do to put myself in a position to be successful? So, so I put it in overdrive. I started staying later in the gym. I started coming even earlier, getting extra shots up. I would, you know, the coaches would put me through drills where I would have to sit on the bench after practice, five, 10 minutes after practice, and then he would have me sprint on the other side of the court and, and I have to make a three-point shot because Hop was preparing me for coming off the bench and making plays. So I was not only preparing my body, I was preparing my mind. And, you know, everything is mental. So once I got that mental side of things, I was able to just fight. I, I had to fight. And and granted, you know, nowadays, you know, some kids, you know, they don't want to, you know, stick it through or, or figure it out or fight. But the ones who usually do, those are the ones that are successful. Because, you know, it's a life lesson because not everything is going to be perfect you're not always going to get your way. And who's to say that if you transfer, you're going to get the results that you are going to get because now you're going into a whole new situation, new coach, new culture, new locker room, new players, new position. And, and guys know that you're coming in to try to take their spot. So it's just, so it was just like starting all over again. And I didn't want to start over, you know, and I wanted to finish strong and then, and, the ego in me, the pride in me wanted to prove Beheim wrong Absolutely. that I can, you know, like, like I can play, I can play at this level and I'm going to make you trust me. And in practice, and I tell the guys even today, your practice has to be your game. And usually the way you practice is the way you play in a game. So, so my motivation was I prepared practice like, I was playing in the final four. I was, I was just locked in every single day in practice and I couldn't afford to miss. So I would train my body and my mind to, to, to just be a machine and, and, and not miss. So he had to give me a chance. He had to give me an opportunity to play. And once I got my opportunity, I made sure that, you know, I'm going to keep it. And, uh, and that's how it worked, but that's just, you know, that's a lesson It's just showing that if you keep on fighting, if you keep on, like I said, instead of pointing the finger, pointing the thumb, trying to figure out what can I do better? You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of, instead of blaming somebody, ask yourself questions, what do I need to do or what can I do better to be a better player, not just for myself, but for the team? And, and, what, and what piece of the puzzle can I add to it? And that was the best thing for me because that was a life lesson because when I became professional, I knew in my mind I had to go in every situation and practice in the game like it was my last because you know there's always somebody behind you trying to take your spot. Somebody yeah. behind you trying to take your spot, somebody in front of you, and on both sides. So you have to be locked in at on on at every angle because, you know, I mean, this sport is competitive and we have to play with the edge every single day. And I... And I was able to do that. And that's why I say, like, I've, you know, like I've overachieved in a lot of different ways. And, you know, Beheim is a part of my success because he he tested my mind. And, and instead of giving up, I fought for what I believed in. And usually when your back is up against the wall, you're successful.